Guys, welcome back to a brand new video, and today we are adding some more storage to my PS5. Is that in focus? It's in focus. This is an M2 drive. I will leave a link to this particular drive in the description below. But we are adding internal storage to my PS5. I want to install more games. So we're going to try and do it. Uh, apparently, according to some certain fans, I need to be a science wizard an engineer to be able to do this. Uh, believe me, I'm not. So let's see how let's see how easy this is. Um, this is currently the PS5 beta. It's not officially out as of yet, but M2 storage is coming. Internal storage for your PS5. So uh, let's get to it. So this is the beautiful M2 drive I've gone for. It's two terabyte, but you can buy this one in the 500 gigabyte model or the one terabyte model if you want. And you can buy this without the heatsink, but you have to install your own heatsink if you want to do that. If you guys want to see a separate video on that, um, me installing a heatsink on an M2 drive, let me know and I can definitely do that. I'm going to leave loads of links in the description below to SSDs, M2 drives that work with the PS5. I will do ones that include a heatsink first, and then ones where you have to install a heatsink with an M2 drive. Um, obviously, the heatsinks will work with a PS5. It has to be a certain size, but it's fine. There'll be links in the description below. You'll be good. It's, it's, it's all good. Um, right. And once we're done this, um, my PS5 probably won't be touched again. That's, that's probably it for life. I'm not going to open this up too often, so it, it's, it's all good. So I've got it on the, the disc tray side. I'm going to pull lightly on this side, and the case should come off. This is a custom... PS5 Black Edition. It's, it's beautiful, I won't lie. And here we have the beautiful M2 slot. Right, so the cover's now off. Um, I've got a screwdriver here. It's not a Phillips, I'd say it's maybe the next size down. And that should be suitable, hopefully. <laughs> I'm sure most of you guys, or your dad, or someone you know, has a screwdriver, I'm, I'm, I'm sure of it. Particularly if you have children, there's Cons you're constantly changing batteries, having to unscrew toys, put them back together, you know the drill. Um, so this panel slides off. Just a little bit of help from my screwdriver. Whoop. There we go. Great. <laughs> that was completely my fault. So the M2 drive is around the 80 mark. So you've got to move the spacer from the 110 mark to the 80 mark. And that's what it basically leans against. But again, this will just slot in. There's no need for a heat sink or anything like that. So just gonna move the spacer now. Unscrew it. Like so. Never done this before. So um, I'm not a science engineer. I have a degree in computering. It's all good. So I'll just move this little spacer. It's so tiny. But it should slot in there. So it's actually impossible to install this incorrectly. See so that little, little spacer there, that little gap? That's, that's, that's how you know you're putting it in the right way. So it's actually impossible to install it incorrectly. Well, I'm sure that <laughs> you, could, you could probably install it incorrectly if you wanted to. Again, it slides in there super easily. Got the screw, which is from the when we opened it up. It's on the 110 mark. It's now obviously been moved to the 80 mark. Push the M2 drive down. Land against the spacer and the screw. And I think we're done already. Yep. That is in. That is secure. Beautiful. And again, I will not need, that's an extra, extra two terabytes. And by the way, it uses all of that space. There's no need for software to be on it, uh, a program to be, put, to be put on it. It's going to use all that space, every megabyte, which is beautiful. And then we need, I dropped it in there. <laughs> I was like, where's, where's the little slidey thingy? Where is it? Well, that, that's the technical term, of course. So that goes in like that. Boom. Find the long screw with the triangle, circle, square, and X. And then screw that in, and that's it. That's it. I mean, that was that was me doing it for the first time, mega quick, and it's all in there nicely. Yay! 
So the first time you turn your PS5 on with a brand new M2 SSD, this is the message you will get. To use your M2 SSD, you need to format it. So it'll delete any content that's actually on there currently. That's fine by me. It's completely obviously a new M2 drive, so that's fine. Um, it looks like I installed it correctly, and it does a read speed test. Uh, despite it telling me that it does have a max speed of 7,000 megabytes, it's still well over the limit of 5,500 megabytes. So we're good to go. Uh, the drive is fully functional and available to play. Yes! Right, so we're now into the PS5. Uh, we're going to look to see if the M2 drive is there and if it's available to go. It is. Lovely. And every megabyte is available, pretty much, by the way, um, is available for games. The amount of times you put an SSD or a hard drive into your PC and randomly there's like 200 gigs that are just gone. Doesn't make any sense, but this time you can use every megabyte. Lovely. So what we're going to do is we're going to move a game over to the brand new M2 drive. So let's do it. Let's give it a go. Let's move games and apps. I'm going to move this to my M2 drive. Okay. I'm going to try and time this if I'm allowed to. Let's see how long this takes. Move. Uh, one second. Start. How long will this take? Whoa, it feels quick. So it was about 33 gigs, 34, we say. So not a massive game. It's now gone to 10 seconds. I heard someone reporting 12 seconds. I guess it depends on your SSD. I don't know. That that That's pretty quick. 20 seconds. I mean, to transfer a whole game, that is madness. It is done. About 28 seconds. 30 seconds. About 30 seconds. That is mad. So basically one gig a second. Is that right? Are my maths correct? Yeah, that, that's mad. And... As you can see, it functions completely as an internal PS5 game. It's literally the same. It's not on an external device. You won't have to transfer it back to the, the standard SSD inside the PS5. It's exactly the same. It's good to go. It's all in the same menu, which I love. So let's just try it out. Let's see. Do we notice any difference? Uh, from what I've heard, there's no difference. It's exactly the same, which is super impressive. So... The SSD in the Xbox, for example, I believe is about 2,500 megabytes. The one I've just installed is 7,000. 7,000 megabytes. It's, um, yeah, it's a beast. It's an absolute beast. Again, I'll have this one linked and obviously a bunch more that do work with the PS5. So you're good to go uh, whenever that PS5 update does release. I want to try and find a rift if possible. Because that's, that's what truly tests. There we go. Beautiful. Yeah, there is no lag. There's no impact on the game at all. Wowzers. Very impressive. I know it's not quite as consumer friendly as maybe the, the Series X version, which I've actually got myself. And I do really appreciate just being able to just slot it into the back of your Series, uh, Series X. But I also like how PS5, there's, there's options available. And I'm guessing they're going to get cheaper. They're going to get bigger. They're going to get smaller. There's going to be more variants, more brands coming as well. Yeah. Should get quite competitive in this market for this SSD. Which is great news for everyone. Cheaper SSDs. More space. Yes! Very happy. And we have the compression tech of the PS5 as well. I'm pretty sure this SSD, hopefully, touch wood, is my, is my last SSD I'm going to install. Hopefully the last time I ever enter my PS5 again. I mean, that's the plan. Uh, that's, that's the goal. But anyway, hope you guys enjoyed this episode, um, this, this video even, of me installing my M2 drive into my PS5. I now have so much storage. I believe I have about 2.7 gigs now of total storage on my PS5. Four PS5 games. Yes. Good times. See you guys later and bye-bye.